It's day six of the hostage standoff. 12 feet underground in Midland City, Alabama, a madman is holding a hostage, a five-year-old boy with autism named Ethan. The bunker they're in is wired with explosives. Above ground, the nation's attention has been captured by the events in this small, close-knit community. We do begin this evening with that standoff playing out in a small town in Alabama. Which on this day is taking a moment to mourn its own. Bus driver Charles Poland is laid to rest. With profound sorrow and regret, we mourn the death of Charles. A hero to his community, but to his wife, so much more. He was my best friend. My sweetheart, he loved us kids. Down in the bunker, Dykes is growing more and more belligerent as he begins to suspect the negotiators won't give him what he wants. In these recordings exclusively obtained by ABC News, he begins to rant at negotiators. By the end of this day, there's going to be a determination as to just exactly what the hell is going to take place. You just go ahead and send some mother down that goddamn funnel up there to their death. The 65-year-old decorated vet is angry at the government and disdainful of the police. You're scared. You know goddamn well I'm smarter than most of you people. You know goddamn well I have the knowledge, I have the experience, I have the ability, and I have the balls to show just how corrupt this goddamn system is. His rants have little logic, but he wants his story told, a story he believes will spark anarchy. You know goddamn well that what I say when I go public is going to create chaos, going to create riots. All of this guy, they got people are going to be standing up to this mother dictatorial, incompetent, self-righteous, bunch of sorry bastards in government. And if that sorry son of a bitch above you doesn't respond to me by 5.30 this afternoon, then by God, I will not be talking to you no as they begin day six, the nation holds its breath, still no rescue, and the danger to Ethan is increasing with every second. Law enforcement's secret eye in the bunker reveals a dangerous man on the brink. He was handling the weapons and the bomb inside the bunker on a more frequent basis. Uh, we knew that Jim Dykes had begun to rehearse. He had begun to prepare. And Dykes has a diabolical plan for Ethan. Jim Dykes relayed to the negotiators, if anything happens to me, I have told Ethan to pull the trigger. That meant he had told Ethan to detonate the IED, the second IED that was inside the bunker. I, I think anyone who was aware of that was wondering, is this it? Right now, this moment, is this it? But police have a plan of their own. They've been practicing a rescue in this mock bunker nearby, and they're preparing for the worst. Why? Ethan is becoming attached to Dykes. Ethan is perhaps attaching in a genuinely affectionate way to the offender, which is a problem, because we don't want him to run in the wrong direction if there's an assault. The final decision of what to do would involve a gut check moment with the FBI director. Ron Hosko, who heads the FBI's criminal division back in Washington, has been consulting with officers on the scene and regularly briefing FBI Director Mueller and Attorney General Eric Holder. Time appeared to be running out. Our on-scene commander was on the line, and the situation was uh, not a happy one. Our behavioral analysis folks told us the best you can hope for is a murder-suicide. The decision is made to take on Dykes armed with guns and bombs head on, on his turf, in a tight space. Neil, two of the state police remember speaking with one of the FBI tactical team members the night before the assault. It was very clear to me that he was willing to sacrifice his life if it meant saving Ethan's. It's now the moment of truth. I was feeling so many things. I was scared. Knowing what was waiting for them down there, they went anyway. It's chilling. I'll tell you, in the command post, when the authorities were, were granted to execute the plan, there was silence. The bunker is finally breached, and with that, Dykes began to make good on his threats, detonating the bomb in the PVC pipe. Smoke begins pouring out of the bunker entrance, only three feet in diameter. The five-member tactical team descends into darkness. They immediately received gunfire uh, from Mr. Dykes. 
I understand there was a IED inside the, the bunker as well? Yes, sir. He was in the process of trying to detonate it. So we're talking about seconds. Literally meant everything. Absolutely. It's all over in two minutes. Then, silence. And it seemed like an eternity. Mm. Quiet, quiet. I think we were all praying. I vividly remember looking at Kevin and saying, you've got to tell me the child's okay. The next radio traffic that we heard was the child's crying. As a parent, that's a thumbs up. That is a thumbs up. If he's crying, he's breathing. Dykes is shot and killed in the confrontation. Ethan and the agents were okay, remarkably sustaining no major injuries. Do you guys believe in miracles? I believe it was by the grace of God. But with all the joy and relief, the thoughts of the team that helped save the life of one child turned to the man who gave his life to save them all, Charles Poland. How proud are you of him? Very, very proud. If I had him now, probably wouldn't let him go for a good long time. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends.